everybody. And welcome to Kirsty. No, wait. I forgot who I was. <laughs> I'm Kirsty. Kirsty and Briny's comfort zone. Live. <laughs> Woo! Woo! <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome, 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 welcome. We are live. I'm Kirsty. I'm Briny. And we're going to talk about some dreams. Yeah, we're going to delve into our minds and find out what the heck is going on. <laughs> Goodness knows. Who knows? Um, so this is like, well, we have actually, oh, the, the, the time is confusing. We've technically, this is our first one that'll go out that's face-to-face. Yes, but just before this, we recorded another face-to-face one, But episode. that goes out after. So we have done yes. one face-to-face. But, but pretend that we haven't because you'll be hearing this one first right now. It's very confusing for anyone who's listening yeah. in two weeks' time. Oh. <laughs> So, hmm. how have your dreams been? been How's your mind? They've been dreamy. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I've not really been having many dreams lately. Um, the one that I have today, I had a while ago. Yeah. Um, a few weeks, I think. And it was a very long one. It was very long and it was very detailed. Um, and... TJ's just walked in here, trying to be trying to be silent. <laughs> I'm going to point him out. <laughs> For those listening at home, TJ has walked in and now uh, he's he now leaving. leaving. <laughs> he's going. <laughs> Goodbye. But yeah, um, so my dreams, uh, I had like a spout of dreams where they were all really in depth and really uh, intricate and long, and there was so much stuff happening. And this is one of those. But I've not had any since. <laughs> oh, you just you've used up all of your dream juice. Yeah. My dream out my dream dreams. juice is empty now. We need to refill it. This is just the residue. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that scraping the bottom of the dream barrel now. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> exactly. I've like I've been having fairly regular dreams, but I as part of my ongoing battle with anxiety, I started getting anxiety about recording them so I was like well that's very useful for doing this exact thing yeah that's really really convenient thank you brain thank you mind (laughs) thank you so much so I have had um I've I've recorded one for this Mm -hmm. um and then I have two that I can just recall one of which was this very morning and I was gonna record it I was like I'll be brave I'll record it and then I looked at the time and it was five minutes after I normally start streaming. And I was like, I should probably get up and actually do things. I should, I should <laughs> do my job. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I still remember it. It was very fresh. Oh, that's good. Very fresh. I am not going to play the recording of my dream today because it was 10 minutes long. And us sitting here for 10 minutes like this might not make a very good stream. <laughs> So I will just describe the dream. <laughs> nice. In great detail. Well, shall we? Should we jump straight in? Yeah. Should we just listen to my recording? Yeah. And I did the thing that I thought I shouldn't do live. And I was like, I should listen through my dream before I do it. Mm-hmm. Then I didn't. And I sent it in because they were like, send in your dream so we can play it. And I was like, I'll just send it in. How bad can it be? <laughs> send it in. So I'm sure it's gonna be fine what's the worst thing that's happened in my head <laughs> well, we, we don't want to say it hopefully, live hopefully too I've, hot for twitch i've censored myself <laughs> well enough um but uh tj if you're ready we are good to listen to the dream let's have a little listen i had a dream that oh you're so I quiet had this rainy big, it was all like a greenhouse can we have it a bit louder it we huge. can't hear it chat can you and hear it was filled with guinea pigs and mice and bunnies bunnies and there were just so many of them and at one point i was inside and i saw this bunny that didn't look very well outside Aww. so i was talking to i had like a crow and i was like okay crow i'm gonna open the door we we'll get the bunny inside and then we we'll close the door really quickly and we managed to get the bunny inside but then he like started chasing another bunny so I had to like chase after him and I grabbed him. I was like, okay, we need to get you to the vet. You're not looking very good. Um, and then there was another bunny that came in that 
also didn't look very well. They were both sort of like grey bunnies. So I was taking them to the vet, but then the scene changed and all of a sudden I had to like distract this class of students whilst the bunny got seen by the vet. And the only thing I could think to do was tell them that it had been discovered that brains were cubes. Um, so I was going into this big talk and just like, they were like, oh wow, fascinating sort of thing. And then I was back in the greenhouse, but it had become sort of like a management game. And I was like, we're running out of money really quickly. I need to find out how many mice there are, how many people we're employing to feed them, all of this stuff. I need to have a good look at the finances. But then it was like this massive estate party and there was just people stumbling around everywhere and everyone was drunk and they were like going home the night after the morning wait the morning after um and i was staying in this like student accommodation in bath but you had to crawl into the room and i was really scared it was like really claustrophobic and i was like i don't want to go into the room is it so something sexy? so i left and i bumped into a friend of mine who was sat with a lady I used to work with and they're both called Sophie. And I was just like, oh, what are the chances? This Sophie, this is Sophie. And then I left and that's about all I remember. Uh, very strange. <laughs> very the strange. End. There you go. I love Sleepy Brian. <laughs> There's so much, so much going on. There was one bit that I didn't actually have in there, I just realised. So when I left the student bit and then I was going through like the big grounds that had the after party, yeah. I suddenly felt this like arm slump around my shoulders. <laughs> it was Jungle Boy. <laughs> oh my, of course it was Jungle Boy. <laughs> he was there with Anna J, who is not in AEW story world his girlfriend but in real life his girlfriend right um and yeah they were just stumbling along and i was like no no not today i've got to go and do my thing now not today <laughs> not today stuff to do i don't have time for a wrestler dream i've got to save this business <laughs> of mice and bunnies so you had another dream about wrestlers yeah and animals yeah and if I heard it right, the, the the animals weren't very well. So it was basically like, you know, those big, like, like the sort of greenhouses you get in botanical gardens. So they've yeah. got like the, the metal grating and they're all very domed and mm. huge. It was one of those, but it was just full of animals and there were all different like ramps and like, it was all built so that they could climb up and, and all of that stuff. And, um... So yeah, the first time I went in, I was like, oh, this is amazing. There's just like loads of animals everywhere. And then I looked outside and there was this little gray bunny that looked really poorly. So I said to the crow, let's get them in. And I remember letting them in. And then I was like, okay, let's get you to a vet. And then they just started chasing another bunny. And I was like, no. So I was like <laughs> racing around. I managed to get them, but I was like, they did touch the other bunny. Will that bunny get ill now? I'm yeah. not sure. So yeah, then I took the bunny away to go to the vet. But there were two grey bunnies that were both ill, but I only took one of them. I think they became oh, the same They bunny. became one. They, just they combined um, into one big yeah. sick bunny. One, yeah, one problem. <laughs> one <laughs> big problem. <laughs> so yeah, there was something I've already... Oh yeah, then when I went back from the vet, yeah. there was Sophie and Sophie who's actually called Sophia, but I called oh. her Sophie in the dream. Um, it was like a Sophie, a Sophia that I used to work with and then Sophie who I did one session of Tales from the Loop with years ago, the first time we ever tried to do it. Oh. But then they had a problem with one of their friends was like leaving Wales and they had to go and get him. <laughs> so they were like, we have, we have to leave. <laughs> Our friend's leaving Wales. And this is real life, not Yeah, friends. and I've never seen them since. Oh. So um, I never some say back. he's still leaving Wales They're to this still day. Still in Wales to this day. <laughs> but she that was like at the very beginning of just before COVID maybe. Mm. And since then she's had like a baby and stuff. So right. she's, I think she was pregnant in the dream. Oh. 
so it's back in time um but yeah yeah there you go okay what's wrong with me <laughs> so when i was at yours this morning jerry was being a little sniffly boy true and you were saying that you were thinking about taking him to the vet again yeah is it possible that sick bunnies are on the mind yeah this is true when, they were, when like, did you have this dream uh this was i want to say on the 10th no that's today i want oh. to say today <laughs> is the 10th um when is the the recording was hang on i sent it to sam yesterday 6th of november this was four days ago four days so ago. it is pretty recent yeah so maybe Recently? maybe that might have something to do with it yeah i i, I was looking in there for like things that are sick etc but there wasn't really anything in the oh book. surprisingly the very good scientific dream book oh yeah you can see the dream i mean you can't if you're listening to this but you can see the dream book that I found out today is is by someone called Pamela Ball. Pamela Ball. Because Sarah came in and was like, it doesn't, it looks like a prop book because there's no author on the front. And I was yeah. like, I've never noticed. It really does look like a prop. The, it, yeah, this is a real book that I bought from a real shop, charity a shop. A real shop <laughs> that exists. It does. It was St. Peter's Hospice in Totterdown that I got Oh, there from. we go. There we go. I can't remember why I was there now. To buy a book. Yeah. <laughs> So sick, they've only got a tiny little section for sick. So there's to feel sick, to be sick, which is neither. Um, and then it says, when something is not right in our world spiritually, we need to eradicate it. Sick, this is one way of doing this, which doesn't make any sense. Oh my God, so if I made the bunny sick. We need to eradicate you. Oh. <laughs> oh jeez. Oh no. Is this like when you say, oh, it's lovely working in a shop, apart from the customers? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this dream would be great if it weren't for me. <laughs> Am I the problem here? No, but it's the bunnies who are wrong. The dream then turned into, like the whole greenhouse thing turned into, you know, the sorts of management games where basically it was like, when you get those games that are like, you start off with a panda and then you yeah. get someone to look after the panda and then that gets money so you then get a horse and then you get and I like it was how you like... get a panda before you get a horse <laughs> <laughs> I mean pa pandas are basic you see them it's everywhere basic can't animal. move for pandas Who doesn't have a I panda I saw three pandas just on the way in today <laughs> but um it was like too many people have been employed to look after these animals and the budget was all over and I was like, mm. right, we need to we go sort back. this out. Count the mice, count the guinea pigs, count the bunnies and then fire people, I guess, <laughs> was my plan. Just fire everyone that was supposed to be looking after I'll them. I'll do it all. Because they're doing a terrible job. <laughs> <laughs> so, am I right in thinking you've dreamt about a pregnant lady before, like last week? Yes, the episode that goes out this week. Oh, well, there spoilers. Was a Pregananat woman. Pregananat. Bryony keeps dreaming about Pregananat. Everyone's Whammy. knocked up in my dreams. Yes. <laughs> is Crow in here? Because I feel like Crow Probably. is a big thing because they're like notorious messengers of Odin and. <laughs> um... Penis. <laughs> Why am I looking under. Oh, no, wait. I should be under C. It would probably be under animal. Why do people be Pregante? Why? Could I be Porganonet? If you dream about Porganat, does that mean who gets Porganonet? Oh, it says seabirds. <laughs> but they're not seabirds, they live on land. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh yeah, okay, so it says... <laughs> it's underneath cock. Cock? Um, dreaming... <laughs> there it is. Dreaming of a crow can have two meanings. Traditionally, the crow warns of death, but may also oh, represent wisdom and deviousness. Oh, but he was helping, wasn't he? Well, I guess was it that... I mean, okay, this has taken a turn now. But I guess, like I was saying earlier, I am worried about, like... You're worried about Jerry, Jerry and yeah. he's getting older oh. and what if, you know, he has to do these things, you know, they, they struggle more the, the, you, when you put them under when they're yeah, older and stuff. So it could just be that the crow was sort of... Jerry there. is pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> is Jerry pregnant? It could be, <laughs> I'm worried about my baby boy. Yeah. Or the crow is just tricking me into being worried. Hmm. Devious trickster crow. A devious trickster crow. 
It could be. Rydian says, Jerry is a dignified old man and I will hear no slander, but he's still a baby. A baby. <laughs> <laughs> he's a baby. I want to find cock. You want to see what it means in a dream? No, I just want to find cock. Can I guess that it will be... Oh, I want to say that it would be something about a strong... Oh, is it under birds? Oh, no, yeah, it is. A strong male influence in your life or something. That tends to be what the book always says. Or something about your mornings. I would guess. What does it say? <laughs> Or either of those. The cock rights. has always been a symbol of a new day and a vigilance or watchfulness. Vigilance. Vigilant on a new day. Uh, so to have one appear in a dream forecasts a new beginning or warning to be vigilant in one's daily work. We may need to be more upfront and courageous in what we're doing. Um, yeah. I found out something about cocks the other day that they have. You know the way that when you have dolls and you tilt them on their back and their eyes closed? Yeah. Cocks have that in their ears. So when they throw their heads back to go, Wah! that's they can't hear it. They like get little ear flaps <laughs> so that they I can't like hear I their screaming. That. I think I, it was on a... Maybe on, you told me that before. I think maybe I read it out on stream when we were streaming together. Yeah, you did. Oh, that's it. See, there I completely go. forgot. <laughs> <laughs> You get the fun of learning all over again. <laughs> Are we discussing roosters? Yes. Yes. Roosters. But I feel like they scream at any time of day. I don't feel like in real... They do, Like yeah, in films loud and buggers. stuff, they will be like, you know, you get up with the cock crow sort of thing. Mm. But in real life, they just they do they it just do it willy all nilly. Time. All the bloody time. As they want. As they want. I wonder if this is my version of your dream about bats, rats, and cats. But mine didn't rhyme. It yeah. was mice, rabbits, and guinea pigs, which is not poetic. <laughs> not very poetic at all. Um, yeah, maybe though, because mine was like looking after the rat that was a bit um, run down. It was a bit scruffy. And then, the Nilesy and then my bat. other rats run off. And then there was the Nilesy bat that didn't have a home. And I tried to get him home and he complained. Typical. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so maybe maybe this is your version. But I think overall it might be like being worried about little Jerry. Yeah. Being worried about a little bunny boy. A little bunny. I wonder if they represent different things in life. Like, well, obviously bunnies are bunnies. Mm. But I wonder if like mice and guinea pigs are it's all to do oh, with like I? juggling different elements of life or something like that maybe not that i particularly do much <laughs> <laughs> so i don't know what would they be so the bunnies would be uh the bunnies in real life and then what would guinea pigs be guinea pigs would be because i associate guinea pigs with capybaras so i guess right. they would be relaxing more okay giving more time to relaxation and then the mice are probably like skittering away doing little jobs. So like the little streaming. Like yeah, the little odd jobs that you yeah. need to do are probably the mice. That would be that would be my guess. Okay, I found animals. Um, animals. So I found rat. Um rabbit. Rabbits appearing in a dream can mean one of two things. The obvious connection with fertility could be important. It means Jerry is pregnant. Pregnant? Um, or it could be that the trickster aspect of the personality could be coming to the fore. Tricksters um, again? Why is everything yeah. trying to trick me in Are rabbits dreams? tricksters? I wouldn't say rabbits I mean, tricksters. Fifi is. Um, the other day, yeah, I, I smoothed out Fionn's blanket. Yeah. And then she immediately ran over and started digging it. And when I giggled, because <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe she's being so naughty. She did the biggest like binky in the air and just oh. ran off. And I was like, you know know you're naughty. <laughs> no, she knows and she's happy about it. I have a video that I got of her the other day where she starts digging and I just went, Fifi, and she just turns around like, <laughs> like, <laughs> what? I'm like, you know what you're doing? I found mouse. Oh. Uh, the mouse's quality of timidity can often be addressed in the dreamer if it is recognized that this can arise from turbulence and lack of understanding. Those are just words. I don't know what yeah. they, those words mean. Does it mean you're shy? Does it mean... Maybe. I don't know. 
I have no idea what those words mean. We've said before, we feel like this book was generated by an AI. Yeah, it's so many like that. of like the sentences are just like I understand bleh. the words, but not in that order. <laughs> Word vomit. <laughs> I feel like And then guinea pigs, right? I find guinea pigs. Yeah. Guinea pigs. I mean Guinea pigs are not in here. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Guinea pigs are very good. Yeah, um, yeah I, I guess it would just be about, I mean, life management. I have been thinking a lot recently about managing my time better mm. and stuff like that. So I guess that's why it then became a management game. Maybe my brain was like, she's not getting it. <laughs> Make it more obvious. It's like, okay, <laughs> put it in terms she understands. It's a game and you have to balance yourself. Oh, oh I get it. it. I see. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like we have very similar dreams yeah. in that sense. We always dream about animals. Animal management. And like they're getting ill or they're escaping or we need to wrangle them and yeah. stop them from doing naughty things. And getting them out of control. <laughs> Running off, getting progante. Running off and getting progante. <laughs> it's just, they just keep doing it. But yeah, that's, that's kind of all I... All I can glean from that, really. I feel like that is the truth, though. Yeah. That do be how it is. That do be how it be. Are you going to retell your dreams? I can us? retell my dream. Will it take 10 minutes to retell? It will probably well? take longer than 10 minutes. Because <laughs> <laughs> I need to remember it. Before the before the stream started, I was like, oh, I'm going to go and like sit in the, in the the in the room and just quietly listen back to my dream so I remember it. And I came in here and people just kept coming in and chatting. And I was like, oh, I want to chat now. So I never listened to it. So I just have to remember it. <laughs> so I'll try my best. I'm ready. Okay. Ready so the dream started on a big hill. It was like a big green hill full of people. It was like a summer's day, like in a park, but it was on a hill. Um, and it was like blue sky, all lovely. And we were walking up this hill. And I think someone was like poor person, whoever they were, they were dragging me in like a sled up this hill. I'm just sitting there like <laughs> having a great time. Um, and we get a part way up. And at some point my cousin is there for some reason. And he's complaining that he has to grow up. He's complaining that like, you know, he's not gonna be a kid anymore and he doesn't want to have to do all of this like adult stuff and like it's what's the point in anything he was just being very angsty and i was like my dude and i remember in the dream being like look at all these people around us all of the kids they're gonna grow up aren't they and he was like yeah and i was like all of the adults they were kids right and he's like yeah and i was like happens to everyone my dude you're gonna have to get over it. But I sounded a lot more encouraging. <laughs> um, and he was like, you know what? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you, you, okay, I feel better now. And I was like, good. <laughs> I was like, okay, good. I'm so wise. And um, so we carried on going up this hill. And when we got to the top, um, there was like almost like a mountain, but it was like a Minecraft mountain. So it's very blocky oh. at the very top of it. Um, and there was a, a monster like jumping around. Get over it, yeah, get over it. <laughs> there was a monster jumping around. Uh, I can't remember what the monster looked like, but it was like the boss of the zone. And it was making like all of these lovely flowers and stuff at the top of this hill, it was making them like die and, and everything was sort of withering around it. Um, and then my cousin wasn't there anymore. There were just people there that were like, oh, we need to fight this, this boss and, and destroy them. And I was like, okay. Uh, so we went to the top of the mountain, the blocky mountain, because the monster jumped up there and we went up there as well. And the two people I went up there with, they got up there first. And when I got up there, I was like, where did it go? And they're like, oh, we lost it, it's gone. And I'm like, but you, you literally came up here the same time as this monster, like how could you have lost it? And then it came out, it like jumped out and scared everyone. We were like, oh damn. And then in order to defeat this monster, you can see why it took 10 minutes. <laughs> in order to defeat this monster, we had to take our sword and shove it up its butt. Oh my God. <laughs> and 
We did it. Like girl gamers have to do. Yeah. With, yeah, okay. And the monster <laughs> was destroyed. We shoved the sword thoroughly up its butt. And it was destroyed. She's so then... So she's crying. to say about book. this. <laughs> <laughs> so we started making our way down the Minecraft mountain. And when we got to the bottom of it, everything had started to bloom again. And it was all beautiful and lovely. And there were all these lovely white flowers everywhere. Kind of the, like um, in Metal Gear Solid 3, when the grass lilies are everywhere. There's just fields of like white flowers. And whoever I was with, I think they were an elf, like a Lord of the Rings elf, maybe. They were like, oh, these flowers, they're so beautiful. They represent all of the lives that were lost fighting the horrible monster. Aww. And I'm there like, they just had to, they just had to shove a knife off the butt. <laughs> but yeah, so all of this loveliness is coming back. Tell me when you want to stop and, and talk no, about this. No, I, I love it. This. There's more. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't know if we're going to be able to fill an hour and a half. We can with this dream. <laughs> so all of the loveliness is coming back. But then, but then, floods of light come from all directions and they start to flood into the landscape. And at first it was like, oh, all of the light is coming back. Now this monster's dead. But then it kept coming. Kind of like in Final Fantasy XIV. This was another Final Fantasy inspired dream. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, and the light just kept coming. And it was bad. And it was like, we're going to die. So we had to go to the top of the mountain again while we watched everything be engulfed by just like a wave of light. Um, and we're at the top of the mountain. And at that point, everything's terrible. The top of the mountain has now become a ship, like a big wooden ship, like docked on the mountain. Yeah. Um, and we went, or I went, down sort of the other side, away from the ship and around. And at this point, there were lots of ghosts walking around the environment and they were trying to attack. In the dream, it was like, any melee class is gonna get attacked by these ghosts. <laughs> And I was like, oh no, I'm a dragoon. I'm going to be attacked. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, I walked down to avoid these ghosts. And there was a group of people, like sort of kids. They were like a scout group. They were, um, they had like gliders, like from Avatar The Last Airbender. Yeah. And they were using them, not the melee classes. <laughs> They were using them to try and fly around. And I was like, oh, I've got one of those. I want to learn to fly Wait, around. Given the themes it. of this dream, where are you pulling that out from? What is this mind that you Describe it, it for right the radio out. listeners. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I want to learn. So I was like, hey, guys, I'm new. Can you teach me? how to fly with these gliders and they're like okay and they started teaching us but then we suddenly got attacked by a wrestler <gasps> yes it's i can't remember her name it begins with an a a lady alexa bliss no oh uh... um is she japanese lady oh asuka yes yeah that one she i think it was her um attacked us <laughs> <laughs> and i was like Oh my god, wrestlers are attacking us. The dreams have converged. <laughs> um, and I ran, I escaped, and I left this scout group to their doom, and I ran away. <laughs> and I climbed back up the mountain for a third time, got on the ship. This is such a long dream. <laughs> <laughs> At which point, there were lots of bad people on the ship that were trying to kill us. Oh, so... Brave, brave, Sir Kirsty, she bravely ran away, away. <laughs> I mean, I do say always be prepared in the scouts. So exactly. I was better prepared have been. to run away and leave them. <laughs> so I was back on the ship um, and it was full of ghosts that were trying to kill us. The crew were bad. And there were a few of us that were trying to escape. And I was like, oh no, where's my glider that I pulled out of my butt? It's gone. So I was picking up pieces of cardboard 
that were just scattered around trying to (laughs) flap to try and get down safely off of this ship, which was on top of a mountain. I just wanted to drift off and and go away. Um, And I couldn't um, find a big enough piece of cardboard. (laughs) So I was, it was like just going around in circles, trying our best not to be killed by this horrible crew. Um, And I think in the end I did find a piece of cardboard and I jumped off the ship and floated away. Oh. And that was the truth. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, okay. I've looked up a few things. We've got mountain. Because <laughs> that played quite a big part. Yeah, that was a central part of the mountain, I think. So it says, in dream sequences, the mountain usually appears in order to symbolize an obstacle which needs to be overcome. By daring to climb the mountain, we challenge our own inadequacies and free ourselves from fear. To reach the top is to achieve one's goal. (gasps) We did beat the boss up there. You did. You did. Um, It says, representing the center of our existence in earthly terms, the mountain is an image that can be worked on over and over again. So is there something that you're like... Well... I also climbed up it three times. True. Over and over again. (laughs) It says with a monster, any monster appearing in a dream is something that we have made larger than life. We have it had a big butt. (laughs) We have personalized it so that whatever is worrying us appears as a creature. It usually stands for our negative relationship with ourselves and fear of our own emotions and drives. I stabbed my emotions in the butt. You did. You stabbed them right in the butt. So is there some? Big emotion that you are having to try and conquer over and over again. You're having to get to the top of the mountain to... I don't know. Excuse me? (laughs) (laughs) What is this emotion that you're feeling? Why did I look up this page? Oh, yeah. No. Um, So then, with that in mind, there is no butt in this book. But there is... There isn't a butt in there? There's anus. So it's a very specific okay. location. Um, it also says, also see, excrement. So we can There wasn't any that of that. Time. It, was, it was clean. <laughs> it was clean. It came out clean. This is when it gets into the Freud territory. Oh, no. You'll be unsurprised to hear. The young child's first experience of control is as he or she gains control over bodily functions. In dreams, the mind returns to that experience as a symbol of self-realization and self-reliance and more negatively of suppression and defense. Such a dream, therefore, is indicating an aspect of childish behavior or egotism. So you're learning to control an emotion. (laughs) By stabbing it in the butt. Yeah. I see. (laughs) (laughs) This is how you seize control in your dream. But then everything went tits up. Yeah. And yeah. So wait, you went up the mountain the first time and you got the monster. I went up the mountain, then stabbed went the monster up in the butt, came back down, everything was lovely, but then the light came in. Then I went around the mountain to the scout group, got attacked by wrestlers, went back up the mountain. To the ship. To the ship, the and then jumped off with some cardboard. Okay. So I looked up flowers as well, just because they seem to play quite a big part. Yeah. It says, flowers in a dream usually give us the opportunity to link feelings of pleasure and beauty. We are aware that something new, perhaps a feeling or ability, is beginning to come into being and that there is a freshness about what we are doing. Maybe that's your subathon. Because it's you've done streaming before, but I this is a new... I, I didn't bloom. know that I was going to do it when I had this dream. Oh, Maybe that was how you got the idea. Oh, maybe. <laughs> that was the bloom. That was the bloom. The, it planted a seed and gave you an idea. Do you remember what type of flowers they are? Because there's loads of They were like specific. lilies. Oh. Yeah. Which are going to be about death. Uh, they always are. It's only got arum lily. I don't know what type of lily that is. But it's really sad, so I won't read it out anyway. <laughs> oh, I told you it would be. Ooh. That's it. Cause in the dream, they were like, oh, all of these flowers represent someone who died killing the boss. Oh, my gosh. If you ever dream of forget-me-nots, it says your chosen partner cannot give you what you need. Which is, okay, this is one of those very subjective things. Because forget-me-nots very specifically reminds me of my brother. I associate them with my brother. So I think right. that's what that would mean if I had them yeah. in a dream. Because when we were little, we had like... 
my parents gave us each a little section of the garden, basically to keep us out of the Aww. main garden. They'd be like, you do what you want with that bit. Do whatever you like, but stay out of the garden. <laughs> so um, my brother chose to have forget-me-nots in his. So Aww. I just always think of him with That's those. So nice. Whereas if you dream about Forsythia, it says, you're glad to be alive. Oh, well, so that's there you good. go. If you see them in a dream, the boss won't be dreaming about that. No. Marigold is there may be business difficulties. Business. Again, very subjective because actually, is this an appropriate story? <laughs> I had a friend who had a thing for the marigold gloves. A thing? <laughs> because the first. Uh, a piece of adult entertainment he watched the lady was wearing them and that's no! his takeaway from it was damn those are good gloves damn. <laughs> oh I need to get me a pair of those it's like the when Harry met Sally like oh I'll have what she's having <laughs> I gotta get some of those gloves <laughs> oh my god it's like it's just, this is a really weird direction for us to go in but I'm gonna do it so I saw a piece of art on Twitter yesterday and it was Dexter's Lab fan art. And people okay. always thirst over the mum from Dexter's Lab. Oh, yeah. She was thick. Oh, yeah, she was. And good. this piece of art... Probably, right? I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I, I remember this because she wears marigolds all the time. Yeah. And in Yoshi this piece does. of artwork... <laughs> Yoshi does. Mm. <laughs> um, and it was a really normal piece of artwork of all four of them. like So the mum, the dad, Dexter, Dee Dee... On a sofa playing the Switch, right? Mm. And it was completely normal, except the mum had massive tits. Like, really comically big tits. And I was just yeah. like... What? Why? <laughs> what? <laughs> so usually if I see something like that on Twitter, I'll then look up and it'll be like, Kirsty liked this. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, that's why it's on my timeline. Okay. Aragorn with massive knockers. Kirsty like that this. That was okay. Gandalf, actually. Wait, it was all of them. It was Gandalf. It was like the Fellowship of the Boobs. It was all of them. <laughs> and then you screenshot it and put it in Discord for everyone to see. <laughs> Kirsty like this. The dreaded sentence of my timeline. Kirsty like this. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Should I find it for chat? You'll have to describe it in great detail for the people just listening in. Yeah, I will, I will. <gasps> be real. Oh my god. Be real has be real, Bryony. I was about to say, where's my phone? It's time it's to here. be real, everyone. Everyone, take two quick minutes to be real. All right, everybody, everybody be real. Um, <laughs> wait. Post to be real. <laughs> I'm being real. Did yours work? Wait. No. It didn't work. Wait. Wait, I'll pretend I'm taking one. Okay. <laughs> Is it working? Yes. <laughs> okay. Mine does this sometimes. Wait. Krusty do so. What is happening? Oh, don't don't even don't even get into this. <laughs> there you go be real everyone this is what sarah and nina have made us become this <laughs> so anyway after that little break of being real um what were we talking about gandalf's tits sexy gandalf mm. Um, oh, I was so tempted to be sexy Gandalf for Halloween. I didn't think I could pull it off, though. <laughs> I think you could. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's what your dream is. Oh, yeah, I was looking at flowers, wasn't I? Okay, I don't you look think... at flowers, I'll find the picture of Gandalf with big tits. Excellent. Um, Excellent. We're going to have to link all of these on the Twitter. Just yeah, so people yeah, can so get that everyone the, um... on the podcast can see. So, podcast listeners, imagine Gandalf the Grey with... Big tits. <laughs> that's it. That's the whole that's thing. That's it. That's that's everything. Um, Daffodil says you have been unfair to a friend and look for reconciliation. See again, I just associate daffodils with the bunnies. Like, oh no, I'm thinking of dandelion. What's the daffodil? <laughs> daffodils remind me. That's the trumpet remind one, me isn't of it? Easter. Oh yeah. 
They remind me of Easter because I would always make cardboard ones out of egg packets. <laughs> so I was waiting for that to finish. I was like, out of egg. <laughs> out of egg. <laughs> I would make egg. Okay, egg I can't deals. find sexy Gandalf because I like too much shit. So you're going to have to find it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, like, I, I guess, I mean, that would be how I would see it. Is there something that you want to overcome i mean knowing you this is probably just she plays a lot of final fantasy and she had a Maybe. dream about it yeah. oh i should look up should i look up go 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 ghost go 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 ghost go 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 ghost which again is probably going to be like there's a motion that you're not something and it's haunting motion. you and what like a poo a emotion and oh, a, an e emotion e poo an e poo <laughs> Actually dreaming of a ghost links us to old habit patterns or buried hopes and longings. There is something insubstantial in these, possibly because we have not put enough energy in them. Oh. Into them. So, but then they were like attacking you. Yeah. Are you being attacked by your past? If a ghost appears in a dream, we may be alerted to our past states of being, in which case we should try to identify these and acknowledge them Ooh. that we have moved on. Oh, so I you like should that. be whatever the ghosts were representing. Mm. Just move on. Move on. Yeah, well, I did. It. I dodged them and I jumped off the ship with cardboard. Yeah. So I've moved on. I wonder if gliding's in that. Actually, Speaking that's probably of ghosts, a though, not the same dream, but yeah. the other week i had my mum staying over in my flat and i went to bed quite early because it was the after dota it was after ti so yeah. i had no sleep so i went to bed at 9 p.m which is very early for me <laughs> and um i actually woke up screaming because i had a dream there was a ghost at the end of the bed oh my gosh what like, like i had i woke up really loudly like Wah! oh because my I god there was a ghost at the end of the bed and i i never wake up from dreams like, did it feel like, like super real yeah 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 yeah. It, that's actually happened before i've said it uh, on stream before i don't know if i've said it on the podcast but i had a dream that melancholy who might be in chat i had a dream that he was standing at the end of my bed oh my wearing god. a sheet um, well, like a typical covered in ghost watermelons sheet. <laughs> And I woke up screaming. <laughs> oh my gosh. Terrifying. It was terrifying. Like it was the sheet with the glasses and then watermelons all over it. Um. Oh, okay. Conventionally, to dream of flying is to do with sex and sexuality. Oh, great. But it would probably be more accurate to look at it in terms of lack of inhibition and freedom. So by the end of it, you were just... Fancy free. I was just like, fuck it, I'm off. Yeah. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> I've conquered my emotions, my emotional monster. I'm a, uh, we um, are releasing ourselves from limitations which we may impose on ourselves. Oh. So, is That's there anything? Pretty, I mean, overall, I mean, this stream was a bit sort of, not dark, but there wasn't good stuff happening. But yeah. The climbing the mountain could potentially be like getting over an obstacle and then going away from the ghosts could be letting go of your inhibitions. Yeah. So pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. And then by the end of it, you have no inhibitions at all. I have no inhibitions. I just, woo. <laughs> Off she goes. Off she goes. People were saying, because I'm doing a subathon next week, people were like, are you going to do sleep cam? I was like, no. No. no, because if I were to have a no inhibitions dream like that, True. I would have no inhibitions and I would be like, well, hey, in my yeah. sleep. And I'd be banned from Twitch very quickly. I have so. an idea for a stream that I actually really want to do that it's not sleeping. <laughs> it's just sleeping. It's something I want to do. I want to do it for myself. It's basically... Oh, this is the most boring <laughs> thing I could possibly... I don't even know why. I should, I should have stopped a long time ago before this sentence got as far as it did, but here we are. It's... Um, there's a type of soil <laughs> that you get a little brick of it. It's, it's cocoa... Uh, what's it called? Not cocoa noir. Qua. Cocoa qua soil. Cocoa qua. And you get it as like a little solid brick and then you add water to it and it expands at an alarming wow. rate. 
over like, well, it's like a, over an hour, but I'm always surprised. Like I, I'll put it in a box and I'll pour water over it. And then I'll come downstairs a few hours later and I'm like, blimey, look at it. It's so huge. So I really want to just stream the soil so that people can experience it live. Um, if anyone wants to be part of this with me. <laughs> Maybe the day that you finally like give up streaming. Give up streaming. <laughs> the finally. Day, the day I give up. <laughs> the day you stop, you're like, right. I'm done here, but I'm going to go out with a bang or a, an increase. Yeah. And I'm going to put a block of soil in front of a camera and pour water all over it and soil cam. <laughs> I find it quite fascinating. It's like when I was growing mushrooms, I was like, they grow so quickly. Because I would, they, there would be like a noticeable difference between mm. when I would go down to like get a glass of water and then I'd go upstairs and start my stream and I'd come back down and they've grown like half an inch and I'm like, how do you do that? <laughs> how do you do what that? What are you doing that for? What are you doing? And I was like, if I streamed that, I could then just watch it back fast and be like, ooh. Oh, <laughs> you could. I think you could stream mushrooms. Maybe you could I mean, grow the soil and then grow mushrooms on it. Oh my God. Or Double I could just whammy. have them next to each other. Or people could have a command and chat that cut between soil cam and mushroom cam. Just to keep it spicy. <laughs> but wasn't like RT's most viewed stream, like paint drying? Yeah, I've heard that, yeah. So there's a market there. One day I'm going to do this. I'll put it as a um, community goal. <laughs> soil stream. <Yeah>, my... <laughs> Streamer soil. soils themselves live. <laughs> there's the <laughs> clickbait for you. That's what I'll get it out of. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Oh dear! Why but yeah, I mean, about this, I don't know. Inhibitions. Oh, you streaming? You sleeping? Oh yeah. If you're gonna show yourself. Show yeah. yourself. Show yourself. Yeah, I um, I don't think there's anything else really. It was a long old dream, but yeah, but we've kind of covered everything there. Well, you did a damn good job. Well done. I had a dream the other day that you do you ever wake up from a dream and you're like that's significant like something right. about it makes you go Ooh. oh there's something going on in my mind mm -hmm. for once um i had one of those dreams yeah so i had a dream that i was hired as a photographer which is what i used to do sometimes still do 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 okay. and it was for like i think it was for a dancer there was this lady who was like sort of dancing, but slowly so that I could take the photos. And um, eventually we were like, okay, got everything we need. That's it. So we started packing down the equipment. For some reason, I immediately had the photos and I started, there was like this really long mirror that went along like a bench. And I started pinning the photographs onto the mirror and they were all blurry. Like there was nothing usable in them whatsoever. And I was just there. I, I carried on, even though I knew, like, I've just, I've wasted this. I've wasted your money. I've wasted your time. I carried putting them, like, putting them all up. And then I just kept thinking, like, I've wasted that opportunity because I should have checked to check that they were in focus before I did this. And when I woke up, I was like, that feels very significant. That feels like I'm trying to tell myself something. Yeah. But I never took the time to figure out no, what it was. What do you mean? Like, that's not... A, like a dream that's gone wild it's like one thing that's it happened. felt very symbolic yeah and yet not important enough to actually figure out on the day i saved it for like a week yeah it's like what, <laughs> what have i messed up what do i need to focus more on i don't know and i didn't record it on the day because i completely forgot it and it was like three days later it yeah. all of a sudden it was like my mind was just like excuse me i'm trying to tell you this <laughs> Hello? thing excuse me <laughs> so yeah <laughs> Have you figured it out yet? What it could be? No, I'm going to figure it out live. Ooh. <laughs> In real time. In real time. I'm going to look up photography. Have you ever used a darkroom to develop your photos? Yeah. Yeah. I like doing that. I, I think it's really fun. My favourite thing used to be... Um... <laughs> hey, Mel and Tim, just got back from my hobby of hanging around at the end of people's bed with a sheet on my head. What I miss? <laughs> I used to love, because when we would be, um, like, taking the... You'd have to take the, the film out of its canister and put it onto a spool so that you could do, like, the... Um, you get this little box that you then put the spool into to develop the film. Mm. And imagine, like, 
a t-shirt but it's completely sealed like the bottom of it is completely sealed and then you'd put your hands inside the arms but from the outside and then yeah. you'd have to do it all inside the t-shirt so it's completely light tight mm-hmm. so we would all be sat in the classroom doing that and you're so concentrating on what your hands are doing like the tactile feeling of trying to feel the end of the film to feed it into the thing and stuff that you would I would often just stare at the person opposite me and not realize I'd just be there just like (laughs) very often they'd just be you know the the little gif of the boy just stood there holding a drink just going like uh (laughs) and then you'd finish and be like ah and they'd just look at you like oh okay Um, but photograph, I've mm-hmm. looked it up in my book. It says, when we dream of looking at photographs, we are often looking at an aspect of ourselves, perhaps our, our younger self or a part of ourselves that we no longer feel is particularly valid. To be given a photograph of oneself, nope, it weren't me. Uh, obviously, photographs represent memories, past occasions, perhaps past difficulties. To be looking at photographs of someone from the past, nope. Photographs in dreams can be used to represent a spiritual need to understand the past. Okay, it's clicked. I know what this dream was telling me. What was it about? I have been thinking recently, because of things like Be Real, and (laughs) I just want to be sponsored by Be Real. That's all it is. (laughs) Um, I, because of, like, I've been thinking, I hardly post pictures not necessarily selfies but you know just capturing the day and I think because I have now like been taking a photo of me every day for this yeah I think it has made me look back on all of the because basically between the ages of like 13 and 30 I don't think there's like any photos of me at all. Oh my that God. entire time is just like, I was camera shy. If there was a camera there, I refused. And mm-hmm. that's it. And I think it's probably that, that I'm thinking that was missed opportunities. Those are my blurry photographs yeah. that I am pinning to the wall to remind Aww. myself to make the most of opportunities photograph now. Photograph is symbolic of a photograph. It is. It's it that is. easy, chat. It's the Snosbury's taste of the Snosbury. Taste it's of Snosbury. just that simple. Lick the photograph. <laughs> mm. Tastes like history. For some reason, I thought you were going to say ass. Ass. Just so I think I'm just so used Tastes to Tastes like ass. <laughs> Do you remember Scratch and Sniff? Oh, I like that you bring that up when we talk about ass. <laughs> I remember. Mm, ass. Do you remember sm- Scratch and Sniff? <laughs> <laughs> it's my move um there used to be a thing there was like a, a live on tv you would buy this thing i think it was given away with like the radio times or something there was like a scratch and sniff thing and then you it would tell you when to scratch your ass. scratch to to watch what was going on on the tv it'd be like really yeah it was something it was maybe on the bbc i can't remember this was like yeah, this was like in the 90s and it was like Oh, now Mr. Blobby's got a strawberry pie. And then it would oh. come up like scratch, scratch, scratch. And you'd be like, <laughs> it's like I'm there. <laughs> Yum. <I'm> sniffing his pie. <laughs> I want to know it about was... Mr. Blobby's ass. I... <laughs> Wasn't that children in need thing? Yes, it was. And oh. I just remember it was like instead of sing along, it's scratch along. Scratch along. And scratch sniff, and sniff sniff along. along. Yeah. <laughs> it sounded like Pokemon. Scratch along. My sniff along's gone into a scratch along. Go, sniff along. <laughs> I choose you. <laughs> I'm just imagining a sniffer emote, but with sniff a up. really long worm body. Oh. Sniff along. Sniff up. Sniffer. I would like that. But yeah, it was. How did we get on? I don't know. <laughs> Let's trace it back. Photographs. Oh, Lost yeah. Breeze sniffing mr blobby okay so we yeah i think it's just that i think it's just that i am more conscious now it's it, like self-confidence is like this i know so many people who are like oh when i was young i thought this about myself i thought this about myself so i wouldn't want to be in photographs yep. honestly i wish i could just say to young me just take photos because you won't care. It's like you were saying the other day. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah. you look back at photos same. and you're like, I hate it at the time. Yeah. I'm fine with it now. Um, Literally. So yeah, just capture moments. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's good that we do Be that real. now. Be real. 
<laughs> now we're real. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I did have pictures taken when I was younger, but I never liked them. Yeah. I was always like, don't show me them. Just don't, don't let me look. I don't want to see. Ugh. Yeah. And, and even now, like, I don't want to see. Like, and like, whenever I'm streaming, like here, like there's the screen in front. And I always, you're gonna notice now, chat. It's like when someone says, oh, you can feel your tongue. I always just stare at the screen. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> Where's but, the, do you ever get that thing where someone says, oh, that's a nice photo of you. And you look at it and you're like, that's me when I look good. Like, what the oh, heck? God. <laughs> <laughs> what does Alex wake up to then? Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I find that like, Looking back on pictures of me as a teenager, I'm like, oh, I look nice there. But I would never have said that yeah. at that time. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's just, yeah, it's a weird one. Just take pictures and don't care about what you look like. Yeah. Scratch um, the pictures, sniff them, remember the memory. Absorb them. Absorb them. Absorb their energy. Put them up your ass. <laughs> Defeat the monster. <laughs> Defeat the monster <laughs> that is... Lack of self-confidence. We're getting a lot of good quotes for merch here. Yeah. <laughs> Shove it up your ass. Okay, write it down. Comfort zone. Ship right. it. Buy it now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was that that was my dream. My dream about photographs. That was a big fear of mine. Like there was one person who I never really did wedding photography just because it terrified me so much. I would, the thought yeah. that you are the one person who can capture this mm. one day. That would be so stressful doing wedding photography because if you mess it up. Yeah, that's the only chance they had for it. Yeah, that's it. And I did someone's wedding once as like a backup person, which was like, I was like, don't pay me for this, which is probably a really bad thing to say because I was like, if you pay me, I'm going to worry. That's going to put pressure on. And I, uh, so if I can just do this as a not unofficial, I'm there. If I get something, I get it. If not, that's fine. And that was nice. Yeah. But yeah, I was always so worried about like, oh, if you miss it, you've missed it. It's, it's, um... Blurry. Yeah. It's blurry and it's gone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Bryony was the backup bride slash groom. Yeah. Every time. That was her price for taking pictures. She wouldn't <laughs> take money. She was like, I just want to be married. Yeah. That's how she got with Alex. <laughs> Yeah, that was my photography dream. Yeah. Would you like to hear about the dream I had this very morning? Yes, I would, because I don't have any more dreams because I am running on empty with dreams. Yeah. Um, so I'm relying on you today. My very long dream was all I had. <laughs> so, okay, this morning I woke up and I woke up late, didn't record it. So mm. um, the dream started that I was at school, but I was... I was me, I wasn't like a child, but I was surrounded by children. Like, I think I was visiting the school. It might be like my niece's school and I was okay. going to see her. Nay, the dream started when I was picking Nay. out a dress. <gasps> my mom was helping me pick out a dress because I was gonna go to my niece's prom. Okay. And uh, I had this very lovely purple dress and then my mom had got me these nice purple shoes. And then she was like, oh, you could wear these. And she brought out a pair of like blue loafers. And I was like, this is not close. loafers. Again. Yeah, <laughs> I've already ranted about loafers once today. I was like, I, why would I wear loafers? Do I look like some sort of, you know, smart boy with his no socks and his loafers? And then mom was like, okay, okay, just wear the, just wear the purple ones. I was okay. Like, okay. I'll wear the purple ones. So then I was at the school and the kids started bullying me. What, for your loafers? No, just for just me. In, just in general. Just in ge they were like, it was like this little group of like posh bully kids and they were like this the school had a roller coaster that went around the top of it and they had dragged it down and thrown it into the swimming pool so that oh it God. went through the swimming pool and they were trying to find someone that they could put on it to go through the swimming pool and they like I was like sending all the other kids away like go away go away like don't let them catch you and then they were gonna catch me so I ran next door and there was a wedding on next door and Tom Clark was there <laughs> And I ran up to Tom and I was like, Tom, Tom, you gotta help me. What should I do? Should I let them bully me? Should I run away? Should I fight the kids? Should I like beat up these children? What should I do? And Tom turns to me and he goes, would a man who could help you have hands like these? And he put his hands out and they were all like from the top knuckle down, they were all like um, calloused. And then the little tips of his finger were, were like, they were all like baby soft. 
like super baby soft. Yep. And then he was like, but my friend can help you. So I turned to his friend and I was like, what should I do? And they were like, I don't know. Um, and then I turned around and Andy Samberg was there with one of his friends and they were having like a little dance. And <laughs> then it cut to, I was like a um, oil protester. And I was having this <laughs> meeting and this guy turned up that we knew was like, like it cut to him at his family home and then it cut right. back and he was like the son of an oil baron. <laughs> and I think he was played by a young Jack Black slash <laughs> Sydney who used to work at the office. It was like a mix of those two. And we, and one of the protesters was like, why would we let him in? Because he doesn't know what he, like he doesn't care. His, his money is oil. And then Fionn was there, as in the person, not the bunny. And Fionn was like, maybe we should let him in. I'm 59. And I was like, Fionn, you're not 59. And they were like, <laughs> you don't know how old I am. And I was like, yeah, you got me there. And then it cut back to you the wedding. You got me there. You might be 59 for all I know. <laughs> it cut back to the wedding. And I was talking to Tom's friend. And I suddenly turned across and I was like, oh my gosh, the roller coasters run on electricity and it's going through a pool. Nobody touch the water because everyone's going to get electrocuted. And I like ran back through to the swimming pool and I was like, stop, nobody touch the water. And then there was this tiny little swimming pool on its own and there was a person dressed as a stingray who was just flapping around. And I was like, well, I guess you're fine. And then I woke up. <laughs> what does it mean? Tell me, tell me what you think it means. Sketch summed it up quite well in chat. Um, Sketch said, this is unhinged. <laughs> <laughs> There's a person who I've not clocked who it is yet, but I think it's the same person, has twice commented on pictures of me on other people's Twitter's account saying, we love an unhinged Bryony. <laughs> I'm like, is this a thing? Is this the thing that is happening? <laughs> I thought my dream was... So yeah, bullies, Tom Clark. Tom Clark with his calloused hands. But his tiny little delicate soft delicate fingertips. delicate fingy tips here, but calloused all the way down. That's what being a gamer gets you, chat. Yeah. A gamer like Tom Clark. He's not. Imagine his response not being shit the bed. <laughs> It's just the way, like, I don't know why that line stuck with me so much about, like, would you trust the advice of a man with hands like these? I was like, It sounds you're like right, he's no. a bit upset about his hands. Like, why would that mean that he gives bad advice? Well, actually, now you say that, I do remember that I took his hands. I, like, was holding his hands and I started... <laughs> I started just giggling at his fingertips and then I, w I remember looking up at him and being like, I'm a bully just like they are. <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry, Tom. I didn't mean to laugh at your little hands. They're very lovely. <laughs> I was like, am I a bully too? <laughs> so yeah. What would you have advised me if I had have run up to you in my purple dress with my purple high heels, not yeah. loafers, and said, Kirsty, should I let the kids bully me? What would you have said? No. <laughs> Fight I would have children. I would have gone and fought them for you. Should I look up bullies? Yeah. I've got my thumb stuck in my onesie. <laughs> Don't know why I felt the need to make that noise when I was pulling my sleeve up, but there you go. Are they chat? Yeah, with the bullies chat. Oh no. Bull. Your dream has a character arc. Mine are never so coherent. I don't I, I remember my dream about Tom Clark as well, where he had a party in my shed. Oh yeah. Mm. And you Booth never was forget there. a dream about Tom Clark. Booth was there with cats. Um, <laughs> we're always dreaming about Tom Clark. He's very dreamable, very dreamy. I don't know if I picked up on the mic, but I was just reading out words saying bull, and then I said boulet, but it's bullet. I was reading it like it was pronounced <laughs> the same as ballet. Boulet. I was like, what is a boulet? <laughs> Sir, I need more boulets for my goon. I got a boulet with your name on it. <laughs> The bully is not in here. Really? Yeah. I said no, but no, it really is not. Um, oh. Would it, uh, maybe under people? That's really weird. Who would have thought that would be like quite a yeah. big one, dreaming of being what bullied? If we give it a Google. See, the problem with when you the Google like guy. dream interpretations, number one, all dream interpretations are bollocks. Very subjective. Oh. And number two, <laughs> 
<laughs> Sorry, that's like the tagline for the, the podcast. All dream interpretations are bollocks. We don't know what we're doing. <laughs> Help. Um, but a lot of websites that just show up on Google when you search dreaming about puppies or whatever, they're, yeah. they're AI generated and they just are so nonsensical. They don't make any sense at all. Um, What's a pentacle? A pentacle is like a, is it like a looking glass? Oh. It might not be. Chat, what's a pentacle? It says, see stars in shapes. It's also a pentagram. Pentacle. Penta pentacles. Maybe it's not a looking glass. What's a pentacle? The Greek god, Pentacles. <laughs> pentacles. <laughs> it's a god. Quite oh, it's a pentagram. Thing. Okay. Ah. A pen yeah, bully is up here. Boy, boyfriend, Bring hair a crowd, dictator. Bully. No bully. No bully. No bully. Mm -mm. It's all right. I've, I'm going to Google it. Um, bullying in a dream. Beep, 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 beep. To dream of a bully. If you see a bully in a dream, it means that someone will put you in an uncomfortable position. Oh. You might witness an unpleasant conversation between two people you've recently met. They will argue in front of you. And accuse like one another of various things. Yeah, this is a premonition. Oh my gosh, who's going to be arguing in front of... Wait, someone I've never met before is going to argue in front of me. Yeah. Talking to a bully in a dream means that you are very tolerant and an open person. See, I was trying to. I was trying to, to save the other kids and trying to understand you them. You were, yeah. You give people chances as long as you think that they are good. And you don't want to believe that anyone would purposefully hurt, offend, or humiliate you. Well, there you this go. This is... Rubbish. There you go. Load of rubbish. I oh. <laughs> I was gonna look up roller coaster, but it's not there. <laughs> this there's ten thousand dreams in this book, and bully and roller coaster aren't in here. Sean Bean said they're gonna argue with you about stealing their future kills in Dota 2. That's true. Mm. I have not yet met Sean Bean. So maybe in the future I will and we'll argue. <laughs> yeah. It's a date. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Woohoo! Bryony helps kids whilst Kirsty runs away and leaves them to die. Uh, yeah, yeah. It do be like that. It do be like that. Well, if they were bullying Bryony, I'd go and fight them. I wouldn't run away. I'd go and beat them up. But then what if you touched the water and got electrocuted? It's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. One of the other... Oh, wait, maybe if I look up... I also oil. like the flappy stingray man. Yeah, it's just the way that they were just chilling, being... A In little... a separate pool of water. It was literally, like, it was so small. It was, like, the size of... <laughs> The bit, you know the bit that, that um, cricket people stand on and they run up and down on it? Yeah. It was it was like the, like that, but a swimming pool. It was just tiny. Just it was enough bomb. for them to flap up and down and that was that was it. Um, I wonder why I dreamt about, like, I mean, I guess maybe because we were, oh. Oh? Spoilers. Spoilers? But today we saw Dr. Simon Clark. So maybe I was just thinking about climate change and oil and protests and that sort of maybe, thing. Maybe, yeah. Because on my drive down, um, there was a lot of traffic and my family said to me, oh, there were protesters on, on the M25, so it might have been that. But apparently that happened yesterday. Today it was just an accident, um, which happens every day on the M25. It's not a very good road. Um, so that as well, lots of... Yeah. There's been a lot of talk about stuff like that, like oil and energy. How does placenta get half a page and yet bully isn't in here? How what does placenta it? mean? The placenta is a source of nourishment for the baby in the womb. Oh, in yeah. dreams, this becomes a symbol of how one gains nourishment from one's surroundings. I suck it through a straw in the middle of the room. It also suggests ways in which the dreamer may be dependent on other people. When we undertake a new project, we have to be aware that we ourselves may not have the resources to care for ourselves properly. We need a placenta. We need a placenta. Dude, that's like the quarter of it. Yeah, I, I need one of those. I, I need a placenta. Myself. <laughs> Dish them if out. You I need one. could choose, like, in the future, if they said you don't have to eat anymore, you could just have a little placenta into the tum tum. Yeah. Would you choose that? Like, you could have because you could have mm. all the healthy food, and you wouldn't even think about it because you wouldn't be like, oh, spirulina. You'd just be like, go Can you my still tum -tum. eat? Or does it, do they like take away your ability? I think it would take away your ability. 
Hmm. I don't know. I, I think I probably would. Tom Hazel often said, well, he said it once. <laughs> I'm going to quote it on it as if it's something he says all the time. He says it all the time. It's classic Tom line. He won't shut up. He says if he could just have like, like a cube of food, he would have that. If he could just, if that replaced, he could just be like, I'm done eating for the day. I've had my cube. Yeah. Whereas I love the I actual... like eating. I like eating for because I'm bored. Yeah. Sometimes I just snack because I'm not even hungry. I'm just like, I want to be I eating. I just enjoy I just food. like it. And Freud has a field day with that sort of stuff because it's like, oh, it's your oral fixation because you missed the boob or whatever. You missed the boob. You missed the boob and you're... Who doesn't miss the boob? <laughs> I mean, I, I don't miss it because it's always on my Twitter feed because you like it. <laughs> I can't get away from the boom. <laughs> There's no protest in here either. Hey, look, I didn't like the Dexter's Lab one, okay. That was a line too far. <laughs> yeah, it was. I drew the line there. You got propeller. It was the marigold. <laughs> prostitute and then straight to psychologist. No protest. I, I feel like none of this dream is gonna... I mean, swimming pool, maybe. We're back to the bodies of water in that way. Yeah. But I would have thought like roller coaster. There would have been a ton on that. Yeah, like they, they moved the roller coaster itself into this body of water. Yeah, they like, oh. Body of water. Yeah, body of water. Shit! <laughs> My anxiety's back again. My anxiety. <laughs> Bryony always dreams about bodies of water, um, and apparently they represent anxiety in a dream. Yeah. Um, so Bryony's often dreaming about the sea. Yeah. This pool. Yeah. Have you judged about rivers before? There was the lake that Garfield Sexy Thick was yes, facing me the, through. Yes, the Garfield Sexy Thick lake. True, true. Sorry, I'm just looking for a picture of Gandalf with tits. Oh, I thought you were looking up swimming pools. No. <laughs> no, no, no. I have I have literally Googled Gandalf with tits. What about roller coaster? Oh, oh, there it is. This is... I mean, I, I'm surprised there's not a thing that says like roller coasters show our emotional journey and the ups and downs. And maybe they thought that was too obvious. Yeah. The dream book is thicker than I imagined. It's got 10,000 dreams in it. 10,000 dreams. It's got a whole blurb at the front that I've never it's read before as well. Kind of. You can't see it, but he's got big titties. <laughs> Are you nervous about your subathon next week? I, yeah, actually I am. And I'll probably end up having dreams about it. And I probably won't oh be able to gosh. sleep the day before because that often happens when I do long streams. But if you're going to end up having dreams in between, because if it's uncapped and you're having the, the sleepy bit, yeah. it could be like live comfort zone every morning. <laughs> True. I will tell chat what I dreamt about. Yeah. But I probably won't dream about anything. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> because I will probably not get to sleep on time. Do you think, if this is nothing to do with what you were saying, do you think, do you remember those Stickman toys? They were like cube Tamagotchis and they had a Stickman in and if you got two of them and you put them together, the Stickman yes. would go in with each other. Yes. Do you think if we slept with our heads touching, we would have the same dream? Maybe. I just realized what a ridiculous question that was. Maybe. As it came out my mouth. We could do like the the Dragon Ball Z thing where we do that. Yeah, and Can then I'd it? send you wrestlers. Let's do it. <laughs> I'll send you wrestlers. And now you we're gonna have dreams together. Something. You'll have schoolwork dreams. I'll have schoolwork. You'll have a swimming pool. Nice. You can deal with the bullies. I'll beat them up. Yeah, mm. it'll work out. It'll work out. It'll work out. Wrestlers with bodies of water. Yeah. I send you, you what? Wrestle... Wrestlers? Yes, wrestlers. Bryony's brain is full of wrestlers. It is chocolate Although, of wrestlers. I had a wrestler in my dream, so yeah. they're already coming over. I love that I censored that Jungle Boy was in my dream when I was recording it. I was like, I won't mention that. <laughs> but I remember, I remember it because Alex asked what my dream was in the morning, and I remember telling him, I was like, a Jungle Boy and Anna Jay together. And he was like, oh, we don't know. And I was like, because they were in my dream, so I'm pretty sure they are. <laughs> <laughs> they must be in real life. Yeah. Brownie is AEW, Kirsty is WWE. Yeah, true. it's true. Like, I'm, my brain is just like more classic WWE, whereas Brownie's been watching all of the recent AEW, so. 
One day I'll have a dream about crocodiles because they're like the wrestlers of the water, the water world. Because isn't that the thing? They're meant to like drag you under and spin you. Spin you around, yeah. They do the death you. spin. Because who was it? Was it Nina was saying to me the other day, like, it'd be horrible to be killed by a crocodile because mm. they grab you and they spin you. Yeah, it's true. Well, they, they, they like, imagine that one of them grabbed your arm and then they spin. I remember seeing a video of a keeper. She was really good. She got grabbed by this croc and without missing a beat, she immediately started spinning herself around. Oh. Like she dived underneath her arm and span with the croc. Yeah. And then just like grabbed it. And, and it was really good. Power play. We're going so off topic, but it was such a cool video. It's like I remember <laughs> I someone was very telling impressed. me that if there's certain snakes, that if they bite you, yeah. your initial, like some people's initial reaction is to like pull the snake and that will just rip. Mm. So you have to... <laughs> Just leave it there. Well, no, you, you, if you can, you put your hand under a tap because then the snake will just be like, <laughs> <laughs> and then they'll get your hand free. That wasn't exactly how it was described to me, but that's how it, so if ever you're bitten by a snake, make sure you're near a faucet. A faucet. A faucet. A faucet. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what? Oh, I was going to say I could quickly read out <gasps> Alistair. Alistair's. We've got a dream. This is going to be a speed. This is going to be quick because it's 5-2. We have five minutes. So we need to be really quick to right? determine this dream. Because Alistair was umming and ahhing about coming down today. And then he didn't. So we're going to have to, this is going to put all of our dream testing to the test. Nice I, dream, I Alistair. Nice dream, Alistair. Okay. I had a dream that I was a bird doing a stream of a game. And then I tried to pick up an ant and they held my finger and I couldn't pull it back because they were too strong. The end. Do ants have fingers? Uh, Where's Simon Clark? Do, do ants? Do ants have fingers? I don't know. <laughs> Why are you looking in the dream book? <laughs> I was going to say. Do just... ants have fingers? <laughs> Fingy ants? Um... I was just looking up ants in general. Okay, well, wait, we've already... Did we look up birds at the moment? Yeah, we did. We were looking at cock. Usually represent freedom, imagination, thoughts and ideas by nature. Need freedom to be able to become evident. What? Uh, <laughs> as far back by pa as pagan times, man has been fascinated by birds and by flight. Birds... Is that your foot? Oh, no, it's a cable. Um, oh, birds we were, were playing foot. <laughs> birds were believed to be vehicles for the soul and to have the ability to carry the soul to heaven. As a result, birds were very often invested with magical and mystical powers, like being a game dev and creating a game. So, Alistair is a mystical bird. I thought who... Alistair was the ant. No, he was the bird, and oh. the, the ant held his finger. Oh, I see. Okay. So he was a bird doing a stream, and then he tried to pick up an ant, but they held his but finger, then it held... and he couldn't pull it back because they were too strong. They were too strong. Ants are very strong. I nice know, bird, Alistair. I know what this is going to be about. Okay, well, so recently, 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 your Alistair has had a couple of meanie stinkies leaving meanie stinky bad reviews. <gasps> no! People being like, Halloween update with shit and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. Little, little piss babies. Little and piss babies who are bad at the game. And I bet when you have this like swarm of tiny little reviews, maybe they are the ants. <gasps> and and that one bad review ant. That was strong. Grabbed. That was strong enough for him to his finger. not be able to pull his... Fingy away. <laughs> he was trying to get it, but he can't let it go. That's what I think that is about. I yeah. think, Alistair, if you're listening, your dream was that you should... Oh, we've actually done it in like three minutes. This was, Maybe I should slow down. Oh, yeah. Don't know what it well, was Well, we about. got to save room for the device. Oh, yeah, true. <laughs> That's what I would think it would be. Something that should be... You know, it's such a small and insignificant part of a larger thing, like a big swarm of ants. There's just one teeny tiny little ant saying a bad thing, but that's the one he can't let go. That's my yes. bam. Nailed it. I'm, I'm um, suddenly like, that's where the mic is. I shouldn't. I the solution my hand. is that everyone who's played Play Up should go and leave a positive review right now. Yes. <laughs> yes. If you, you like it. Plate Up is the only if game you, I've reviewed If you didn't like it, then Steam. don't leave a review. Just, just go away. <laughs> I've never felt moved to I always tell people to leave reviews because they are actually good. Like I have 
friends who are game devs and reviews are one of the best things you can do mm. to help their game. Yeah. But do I do it? No. No. <laughs> No, but that changes today. Oh, look. Alistair's in chat. The ant kept asking for baked potato. Oh. In that case, I think the ant was wise. And you should listen to listen them. to the ant and give them whatever they want. <laughs> you should put a picture of the ant in the game. Yeah. <laughs> the ant and their little beetle buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there we go. There we go. We've managed to talk for an hour and a half. A special extra long episode. Extra episodes. long episode. We crammed um, in. Oh, we, we're like, the so dream bank dreams. is empty now. Yeah. Now we're, we're just, this is it. We're yep. retiring. Yep. It was a good yep. run. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> um, but for anyone who hasn't heard us before, we are Kirsty and Briny's Comfort Zone. This is what we normally do. We listen to dreams. We sometimes get very lovely guests on. We're yeah. going to have a guest on next episode. Um, so if you like this, then tune in. This is just for people listening to when it's going When it's out, out not you guys <laughs> in chat. Yeah. Listen to next week. Yeah. If you're watching this live in two weeks. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, jeez. We're time traveling. We're time traveling. <laughs> But yeah, thank you so much, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the episode and we will be back next week. Not on the main channel, for those of you watching on Twitch, <laughs> but on Spotify and everywhere else you listen to your podcast. We'll be back next week. And we'll see you there. Yeah. Um, thank you so much, Kirsty. Thank you, Brian. -y. And until next time, everyone. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.